Hello, good morning and welcome to another reading vlog. It is Grace, welcome back. I haven't done a reading vlog in about a month and they're so much fun, I really like doing them and I think people like watching them so I've decided this week I shall be doing another one. So I've chosen this week because I am on holiday for three days this week and we are going to the Lake District, which I'm very excited about. We're leaving this morning um, for two nights. We're going to Ambleside in the lakes and I can't wait. So I just thought I'll probably be getting a lot of reading done. I'll be doing something interesting outside of the house. So why not vlog it? I, I know a lot of people just do like generally what they're reading this week, um, which is fine and which is great. But I wanted to kind of like theme it. And I was looking at my TBR, like choosing what I was going to read. And I realised I had four books on it that all had blue in the title. Therefore, I will be reading books with blue in the title for a week. I'm obviously very on brand, dressed in my blue jumper. I have had my nails done um, and they're not blue. They are green. So yeah, I have four books that I'm going to be read, attempting to read this week that all have blue in the title. So let us begin by me telling you what they are. First, we have um, Blue Ticket by Sophie McIntosh. This just came out in September. I talked about it in my anticipated book new releases video, which I'll link down below. And I don't usually buy a hardback, but I'd seen this on Instagram quite a lot. And it felt like for me, one of those books where if I didn't read it now, I'd probably kind of like lose interest in it a little bit just because it's kind of like a dystopia which isn't something that I usually read but I feel like because I'm hyped about it now I should read it now because if I then see bad reviews I just won't read it so it is about a society in which when women get their periods they have to report to like a clinic or whatever it is and you either get a blue ticket or a white ticket one of them means that you like have to have children and the other one means that you never can have children so yeah very much like a in the spirit of the handmaid's tale like the farm kind of reproductive female maternity dystopia so yeah that is something i really like reading about so excited for this one then i have the bluest eye by tony morrison i've been wanting to read this for so long i haven't actually read any tony morrison ever which is crazy because i'm sure i'd absolutely love her um she seems really up my street everyone raves about her and i've heard from a few people that this is the best one to start with um and also i think kieran from katie books this is like one of his favorite books so yeah i'm really really excited to get some tony morrison in my life and then i have two thrillers which is exciting just because i feel like i haven't read a thriller in ages so the first one i've got is bluebird bluebird by attica Locke. this is a kind of thriller set in america it's part of it's the first one in a series that i think is called like the highway 59 series or something you're following Darren Matthews, who's a black Texas ranger working the Blackwood towns of Highway 59. I think it's a thriller that is a lot to do with kind of racism in America, but I've heard such amazing things about this. So Simon from Savage Reads read this and the other one and was like, they're the, some of the best thrillers he's ever read. Um, so yeah, very excited about this one. And then another thriller, which is Blue Monday by Nikki French. So I've again, never read any Nikki French, but I've really wanted to for a while. I know a lot of people love her and it was actually April from Getting Hugger With It who kind of inspired this going on my TBR because she loves this series. So this is the first in the Frida Klein series. Um, and she's basically like a psycho, a psychologist, I think, or a psychotherapist who ends up solving crimes, but apparently like they're very cozy, very gripping. So yeah, that is the four books that I will be trying to read this week, as well as walking around the Lake District and then unfortunately returning to work. So yeah, we'll be setting off shortly and I'll check back in with you then stopped en route to get a starbucks and cows Moo. the book that i am going to start reading today is blue monday just because it's a monday and i'm reading blue books so it felt like i had to start blue monday however i haven't started it in the car just because well it's alex's birthday trip and i would feel cruel sitting and just reading leaving him by himself it's such a nice day so it's been a really nice drive so far we've just been blasting some old tune so yeah no reading yet but i'm sure there's still a lot of time hello so this is our hotel room we have arrived a nice little bedroom nice little living area and then my hair little the pride and joy this balcony with these amazing views and a hot tub hence the hair already getting ready to go in but yeah I mean 
beautiful. So just been in the hot tub and it's actually so hot. Like it's so sunny and warm that I lasted about 10 minutes and then I was like, mm, gotta get out. But I do have a brew dog, which also is blue on brand. Um, and I'm gonna sit and read some of Blue Monday in the sun. Well, hello. Never thought I'd be um, vlogging from the tub. These are not my sunglasses. Um, so I'm like 175 pages into Blue Monday by Nikki French. It's about 400 pages long and I'm really enjoying it. So I didn't read the blurb before because um, I vaguely knew it was about like a psychoanalyst kind of solving crimes um, and I didn't really want to know anymore as I never do and yeah it's really good it's very um I'm not sure fast paced is the word but like a lot is happening so because I hadn't really read the blurb you're introduced to like some characters and this crime that happened in 1987 and then you're introduced to the main character Frida Klein who is this psychoanalyst but then you're just introduced to like a whole range of different people so like some police officers some of her patients some people she works with and so I wasn't really sure like what was going to matter who was important and I like that um now it's becoming a bit more obvious and I have read the blurb now that I'm like halfway through um and I can kind of see what's happening and I'm very intrigued I really like psycho like psychological kind of thrillers um and so I often really do do well with crime books that are kind of rather from a straightforward police angle more from a kind of yeah like psychologist or you know forensic criminologist that kind of thing so I'm really enjoying that I'm very excited to keep on reading and yeah this is the first in an eight book series I think following Frida and yeah uh very much enjoying here is the sunset just so beautiful hotel breakfast good morning it is not quite so beautiful is that how you speak it's not quite such lovely weather today it must be said um it is pretty gray but it's dry um which is the main thing we've just had delicious breakfast oh my god last night went out for food and in fact let me prop yeah we had an absolutely amazing meal at this place called lily's bar it was so busy i've booked for tonight because tonight is alex's birthday but we hadn't booked anywhere for last night and oh my god it was like impossible getting in anywhere but we got into lily's and it was delicious i had i didn't film it but i'll put a photo here of this gnocchi that we had it was like a chicken gnocchi oh my god it was so so good i had such extreme heartburn last night because i proper had like full three courses bottle of red wine it was great um so yeah the plan for today is that we're gonna go on a walk it's just like a about a five mile walk i think um and i've been told there's a really good bakery so i might get a little snack for there to eat when we get to the top and then there's an independent bookshop in town that i spied yesterday and i really want to go to so we'll probably do that after the walk um but yeah i am ready so i'm just gonna sit and read some of my book while i wait for al i was just recording like a time lapse of me reading and i just got to a very it's not even like a plot twist um the main character has just punched someone in the face which i really wasn't expecting not that kind of book i mean he definitely deserved it but yeah that was funny um i was literally just like yes frida you go girl obviously don't condone violence but also he's not a nice guy is that a cow oh, that was you. Uh, bet this view was good once upon a time before it was foggy Is there somewhere? Huh? We just can't see it. Made it to the top of the hill. Again, another view that would have been meh. <laughs> Found my first lake in the Lake District. Stopped for a beer. Uh, and it is a Hazy Days London Beer Factory Session IPA and it matches my jacket so cheers. Just got back from like an eight mile walk, I've changed my shoes and now I'm going to go to the bookshop which is very exciting.
Hello, I am back and I bought some books. Ooh, the lighting in here is not good. Um, yeah, it was called, it's called Fred Holdersworth's Bookshop or Fred Holdersworth Bookseller. Anyway, it's this really cute indie in Ambleside. Um, it's actually like tiny. It's so small. I think I vlogged a bit when I was in there. But I was there for like so long just looking at the same racks. I really liked the selection that they had. It was, yeah, really interesting for being so small. And it also had a lot of like really cool additions, um, which is what I kind of like about those smaller bookshops. It's like they had a beautiful Bloomsbury Classics Donatar, um, the little friend, but obviously, well, not maybe, not obviously, but uh, Kieran from Katie Books had got me a copy of that. So obviously I couldn't buy that. There was like a beautiful Adichie, but it was Half a Yellow Sun, which is the one that I've just recently bought. So I didn't get any like cool editions per se, but I did buy three books. Let me take my jacket off. So I got, first of all, Dominica by Angie Cruz. This has been on my list for a while now. I was waiting for it to come out in paperback, which I think it did fairly recently. Um, so yeah, I was happy to see that. Very excited to read that. And then I got The Overstory by Richard Powers. So this book really, really intimidates me and isn't a book that I ever thought I would read. It's kind of about like trees and it's really long. However, it won the Pulitzer Prize. And I've been on a bit of a like Pulitzer Prize hype recently, like realized that I seem to love a lot of the winners of the Pulitzer Prize and I've kind of picked up a few other ones. And also I have heard amazing rave reviews of it. So I just thought, since I'm in nature in the Lake District, it's like the perfect time to buy a kind of nature -y book. So I got the overstory, don't know when I'll read it, because like I say, it scares me. And then finally, I picked up this really beautiful copy, actually, of um, Things Fall Apart by Chinua Chebi. So I've wanted to, again, read this for a while. This is kind of like a modern classic, published in 1958. It's set in West Africa, um, and it says the novel reshaped both African and world literature. So yeah, it's just one I've been wanting to get to for a while, and when I saw it I thought yes let's pick you up as well so a little haul exciting I can't go into a bookshop especially an indie bookshop and not buy anything um and now I'm going to get in the hot tub and drink a beer very exciting and probably read my book yeah remember this is a reading vlog guys I'm now reading more of Blue Monday I'm on page like 250 so I'm hoping to finish it today I'm also eating a Tesco just cheese sandwich because I am a reprobate. Morning. Um, so we are leaving the Lake District. Very sad. Um, still very pretty views at the minute. And I just finished Blue Monday. I only had about like 10 pages left this morning. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Last night I was like thinking about my rating and I was like, yeah, I've really, really liked it. Um, very fast paced. There was one like big plot twist that I'd guessed but I was like I don't actually mind it makes me feel smart um and then as I was reading those last 10 pages there I like screamed because there was another plot twist that I just did not see coming and I was like shooketh as the kids say um so I'm gonna give this four stars I really liked it it is extremely similar I would say in vibe to the Jackson Brody series by Kate Atkinson which I talked about in a video that went live this week I'll link it below um and I love that series and I know April had been from getting huggy with lit was looking for like a series to replace the Frida Klein series. She's basically why I've read this. Um, so I would definitely say she should read the the Jackson Brody series. It's that way that like there's a, a few different kind of mysteries you're trying to solve and it is kind of dark, but also there's this sort of, I'm not sure what the word is, not really light, a bit lighthearted, but also there's just so many characters, so much stuff going on. It's a little bit like, unrealistic but in a good way so there's quite a lot of like coincidences and like wacky characters so yeah highly enjoyed will be continuing with the series um, i'm now going to potentially read a bit more in the car and i will be reading the bluest eye by tony morrison so yeah i will check in later wow stunning hairstyle um i'm home now it's sad it's extremely cold i look exhausted um and i have been reading the bluest eye by tony morrison so I haven't read any Toni Morrison before, but I've wanted to for a while. Beloved is obviously her most famous one, but this is her debut novel. And I'd heard people say it's like a better place to start just because her language or like her use of language in her writing can be kind of challenging. I'm really loving the writing style of it so far, actually. It's about this girl called Pecola um, and her family living in Ohio in the 1940s, like post depression. I'm about 70 pages in right now. It's about 200 pages. It's quite dark um, and I think it's, gonna only get worse really 
sort of about her as a young black girl in a very poor family, in a very kind of neglectful family and about her feelings towards herself and all of the issues around race. So yeah, it is very kind of bleak and sad, um, but obviously really important and kind of beautifully written as much as it's kind of painful. I'm gonna read some more today, um, but right now I'm watching TV. Um, we're watching The Boys on Amazon Prime, which Al started watching and I was like, sounds rubbish, don't wanna watch it. And then he started watching it without me and now I'm like, mm, maybe I wanna watch it. And every time someone comes on screen, I'm like, who that? Who they? Who'd they be doing that though with? So yeah, that is what I've been doing. Hello, it is now the next day. Um, I'm back at work and I'm stressed a bit. Just wanna cry. Love being back at work. However, still on that blue brand, you know? Gonna eat Doritos uh, and be more stressed, but then I'll be reading again at lunchtime. Hello. The lighting is not good. It's so dark today and it is also, to use my favourite word, chuffing freezing. I've finished work now. Um, I'm in a much better mood than I was this morning. This afternoon, I recorded an event for the Durham Book Festival. I'll link the programme down below with Leila F. Saad, who wrote White Supremacy in Me, in fact. This book, which I read recently, um, and it's a really brilliant book about white supremacy, basically, about racism, institutionalised racism, and it's kind of really active approach at how you can look at your own behaviour and your own ideas and work at how you fit into wider ideas of racism and what you can do to help. And um, so it was a really brilliant event. Layla is an amazing speaker. It was really inspirational. So that really kind of improved my afternoon. Yeah, I am glad to be finished work. Alex was still off today and he was just like laughing really loud all the time, like watching TV and I could hear it. And I was like, okay, so why are you doing that on purpose? You're not even having that much fun. But now he's gone out to play golf in the rain. So who's smug now? Because at least my hobbies mean that I just sit inside and read. I also finished, oh, let's not talk about like these two chairs that we need to get rid of because they were like free from family when we first moved in, had nowhere to sit, but now actually there's just too many places to sit. And I've got another sofa bed arriving on Sunday. So we really need to get rid of them. It's like being in a weird cinema. I finished The Blue Die by Toni Morrison. Really, really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. It's a difficult book um not so much in terms of the writing style i actually really loved it i thought the writing was really beautiful extremely raw and kind of very lyrical it like moves around a lot it's not particularly linear but yeah very effective it's not quite the book that i expected it to be in that i thought we were following pecola which we are but really we're following kind of a wider look at that community who live in this town in ohio in the post-depression era, mainly at the black citizens, well, basically entirely at the black citizens. So you get members of Pakoda's family and kind of specifically her mother and father and their backstory. Um, but also the, the whole narrative is kind of framed from two other girls who live in the neighborhood, two sisters called Frida and Claudia, who are kind of peers of Pakoda's and are watching what happens to her from an outside perspective. It's a really difficult read, like there is rape in here, incest, um, it's really difficult, but I thought that it was just really well done and really heartbreaking. So this pervading idea of Pecola's longing for blue eyes uh, because she kind of sees herself as ugly and a lot of that is wrapped up in her as a black girl and the way she feels about herself and the way her parents treat her and because of how they see themselves. Yeah, it was just really really heartbreaking. And I think Toni Morrison just did such a good job of getting across that really honest, raw kind of pain. And like I say, I thought the framing of these two other girls, it worked really well because, you know, they themselves, I don't know, by the end, they're the kind of only people who can sympathise with Piccolo and even they don't know what's all that's gone on, I guess, because they experienced a lot of the same things so yeah i thought it was a really really brilliant book i'll definitely be reading more tony morrison uh i'll probably read beloved next but yeah that was really really good hello so i've come to the difficult decision that i am gonna have to cook my own food um usually when alex is out of the house i either just like squirrel in the cupboards like a rodent for like dried goods or my main go-to meal is just to go to my parents house however 
there's a local lockdown i can't do that very sad in my last vlog i showed you my like student meal bare minimum food that i would cook myself which was pasta and cheese and a tin of tuna i'm now going to show you what my like top level culinary skills is which is also a very simple pasta recipe you will need pasta chicken i mean you don't need chicken i use chicken for this the thing that does all the hard work philadelphia herbs and garlic and a lemon i don't have a lemon don't want to go to the shop so i've got a kind of crusty looking lime oh and chicken stock and voila now i'm gonna eat it i'm gonna say no one will be shocked to discover that it does not taste as good with a weird old lime as it would do with like half to a whole lemon which is what i would usually use but you try you know you win some you lose some hello good morning slash i think it's afternoon and uh, happy Friday, apparently it's a Friday. I had basically no idea this week. I've just been so confused as to what day it is because I started work on a Thursday. It was a Monday, now it's suddenly the weekend again. I feel like I don't really deserve the weekend, but I'm gonna take it. It's lunchtime, I'm gonna make a bagel and I'm going to read Blue Ticket next, I think by Sophie McIntosh. I'm not sure how long this is. Hardbacks always look like really deceivingly big, but then the text is sometimes huge. Like 200 and... 80 pages and yeah not much else to report other than that i have honestly looked so crusty in all of this week's vlogs i didn't wash my hair this morning because i was going to go for a run but it is so windy outside you might be able to hear it and i don't want to blow in the sea today i also have this jumper um which is a donna and the dynamos jumper like as in mamma mia best film franchise however my friends got it me from etsy and they spelt Dynamo is wrong, so it's my Donna and the Dynams jumper. Hello, uh, it's now later. I finished work, made myself a bit more presentable, and read my book. But then I just remembered that I had to do something else for work before I officially sign off for the weekend. Love that noise. I've read about two hundred pages of blue ticket by sophie mcintosh and i'm actually really enjoying it so far i'd said it was kind of like a feminist dystopia and it kind of is um but it's a lot slower and more kind of beautifully written than i was maybe expecting don't know why i was attempting to do like three things at once there yes so it you're basically following a girl called kala and they live in this place in a lot of ways it's very much like the world that we live in um but basically when girls get to puberty when they get their period they go to a clinic and it's a lottery and you either get a blue ticket or a white ticket a blue ticket means that you're never allowed to have children and they immediately put like a hormonal birth control i think it is in you so that you can't have kids and if you get a white ticket you have to have kids so immediately girls are separated Kala gets a blue ticket and it's a bit weird the way they kind of send them off into the world you're not really sure what's happening and then you jump forward in time you meet Kala she's in her 30s and she feels unfulfilled and she's started having the overwhelming desire to have a baby um and you basically follow her experience getting pregnant what that means in that society what she has to do and it has without giving anything away it's kind of a bit of a like survivalist story in a sense or like not a road trip but yeah she has to kind of go on this journey Although there is this sort of movement, it is still quite introspective. You keep a tight focus on colour. There's not huge amounts of world building. You kind of learn more about the societies you go on, which I like. And yeah, like I say, about two thirds of the way through um, and enjoying it. Not huge amounts to say about it. I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen, where the story's going to go. I don't think there's going to be any huge plot things like i say i don't think it's that much of an action based story but i could be wrong so yeah that is that oh i got a delivery and i think it's our tv stand which i mean couldn't come quick enough but it's so heavy alex is not in this is it i managed to like drag it through the porch and here but it's kind of massive and really heavy uh so it's just gonna chill there alex is actually with his dad because we are in a support bubble with his dad because he lives by himself and he lives on very close to us and so i think i'm gonna go and meet them because it's a friday in my very undeserved weekend i'm actually so scared to go outside it is chucking it down and really windy and cold and horrible so i've got alex's jacket on maybe i want one of these jackets 
honestly like the best thing about living with al is having two wardrobes not gonna lie wish me luck good morning it is saturday and i'm just haven't got up yet i've just been chilling in bed with bae do you want to be on camera babe at least i amuse myself it wouldn't be one of my vlogs without getting larry in he is the favorite of everyone seemingly my channel mascot doorbell I got distracted by the doorbell and but, <laughs> shut up i was gonna tell you that i'd finished blue ticket this morning give you my thoughts on it but then uh walked in to come pick it up and someone <laughs> had left a remote on it alex is obsessed with just using my books coasters for anything <laughs> it winds me up um i guess i'll tell you about this later we're now going to build the tv stand so <laughs> Hello, we have now built the TV stand. Let me show you. Here it is. Please ignore the football. Um, I'm extremely happy with it after literally spending so much time staring at the floor. And then also we got a surprise delivery of the sofa bed, which I did not know was coming today because I don't know how to read dates. It is the 26th today. I did not think it was. Um, I'm not sure what we're doing with this. The initial plan was to put it in the dining room, but actually I kind of like how it looks here now. Um, the living room feels like very much more put together now. We still need to put the pictures up, um, get maybe a little side table. And excitingly, I've got another bookcase coming on Thursday to go there. But yeah, very successful day of building. I've just remembered that I need to tell you about Blue Ticket. I've got a bubble in my throat. This sofa is actually a pretty good place to uh, sit now and prop you on the windowsill. Yeah, I'm just drinking a jean tea. So finished Blue Ticket and I enjoyed it. I'd probably give it a 3.5. I gave it a 4 on Goodreads. It definitely surprised me how much I really loved her writing style. It's very, not descriptive, but I guess what's the word kind of like introspective and yeah you're very much in her head and the way she's describing motherhood and these feelings i really connected to the writing style i might read the water cure sophie mcintosh's other one um and yeah basically all i said before in terms of i like the slow burn of it i definitely thought it was unsettling this society and the way she kind of showed the way that society treats women differently depending on their choice of whether or not to have a child i thought that was really clever the way she kind of framed that and there were some aspects of kind of violence towards women that again i thought were really unsettling and done really well i also think there was a lot of interesting ideas put forward around like or different perspectives on motherhood that were put in here that i enjoyed i would say like i didn't think the book fully came down on one argument or not that it has to maybe that's the point but i wasn't sure ultimately at the end like what this book was saying to me other than giving these different perspectives and these different relationships to motherhood like I say that might have been the point but for me I was left a little bit wanting I also didn't really like connect to the main character so I don't know if that maybe tempered my enjoyment but yeah altogether very glad that I read it um and I think that if you maybe prefer if you like anyway kind of like a bit more dystopian or a bit more like road trippy survivalist books and I think definitely read it because it does have some interesting things to say and um, we're gonna go for a curry soon just to alex's dad's again um which i'm very much looking forward to all i've had today is a bacon sandwich and i haven't started bluebird bluebird which is the final book of my little blue books reading challenge also very extra that i got a blue sofa during this video um so yeah i might start that now but likely i'll end up reading it all tomorrow or hopefully reading it all tomorrow i don't want to have to end this video unsuccessful but yes yeah, so i'll check in with you gluten morgan it's actually not morning um i did not wake up until 10 to 11 um which is kind of crazy but i know why it's because i was up from 4 a.m till 6 30 a.m just couldn't sleep for the past like three nights i've woken up at 4 a.m on the dot so i'm probably haunted just fyi it's sunday it's the last day of this vlog and i need to read well i don't need to i want to read bluebird bluebird by attica lock how long are you basically about 300 pages um so i'll be interested to see if i can do it i don't really have any plans for today apart from sitting and reading although al has just said hmm do you want to go out for lunch and i'm like i do i really really do so 
We will see. I'm going to sit and read now and then see what happens. Hello. So went for lunch, had a club sandwich. It was delish. And I've just been reading Bluebird Bluebird. I am 200 pages in. So 100 pages left and it's a really quick read actually. I'm really enjoying it. You're following a black Texas ranger called Darren. And basically at the start of the book, he's kind of been like suspended because of a incident that was very like racially charged um he's kind of investigating the aryan brotherhood and then he gets embroiled in a different situation in a texas small small town that is not where he's from uh, and basically a black man who was out of town was found dead and then a few days later a white woman was found dead so tensions are running high he talks about you'd expect you know a white woman dies and then there's like a retaliation killing of a black man but it's been the other way around and they're not sure what's happening and he's kind of investigating, but he's kind of at odds with the sheriff of that county. Um, sorry, Al came into the kitchen. He obviously doesn't want to be on camera. I'm really enjoying it because I really like small town settings in thrillers. It's basically like my favourite dynamic. Um, and it's in the Deep South, which is an area that I'm really interested in. There's a lot of like secrets coming out, a lot of, you know, family history and good juicy stuff like that. So yeah, very much enjoying it. Going to keep reading now. Hello. As ever, um, this vlog has just gone rapidly downhill in terms of interest uh, in the last day. Um, I've got a wine and I finished Bluebird Bluebird. Um, yeah, I was gonna wait and like film a clip once dinner was ready because I was making gnocchi and I was like, I'll show off the gnocchi, but I simply can't be bothered. Um, we're having gnocchi because of how good that gnocchi was in the Lake District. I just can't stop thinking about gnocchi. Also, has anyone else seen the TikTok trend? Yes, I know, I'm too old for TikTok, where it's like a tweet um, that says like, if he knows how to pronounce Noki, it's over for you other guys. And people record their boyfriends being like, if he knows how to pronounce Ginucci, it's over for you guys. That's all I can think about. Anyway, love this, really enjoyed it. Everything I said before stands about like the atmosphere and like the family secrets and all those good thrillery things but also obviously there was like an added layer of tension I guess or conflict in the way that Darren is like up against a lot of basically quite racist I can't speak basically like a racist policing system he is a ranger but he's interacting with a county sheriff and it was a good way I think of adding like yeah I guess conflict so he knows he's in the right bad things happen but it's, it's still not as simple as that because of the racism so it worked on a plot level but then also it's just a unfortunately a very true thing and I think something that should have I mean maybe it has been but I haven't come across that developed so well in a thriller before and really put the light on that so I thought that was really really great um it's a really smart thriller as well as being just gripping but also the end of it kind of took me by surprise but I'd guessed about halfway through who I thought was like the culprit and I was like right I didn't guess all of it but I was right um <laughs> braggy but I really liked the ending um it added another layer on it set up the second one I'll definitely be reading the second one when it comes out in paperback and yeah I just really like the characters the only thing I gave it four stars the only things that I didn't like about it was like it was a little bit thriller tropey in that like Darren has alcohol problems and I'm just a bit sick of reading about like the male detective with alcohol problems. And there was an element where he kind of, the man who died, uh, his wife was there and they kind of, nothing really happens, but I don't know, just that dynamic of like policemen and then like the damsel or like the victim's wife. I don't know, I just, again, find that quite tropey, not my fave. But all in all, really enjoyed this. Would really recommend it if you like a kind of, slower burn thriller a really atmospheric thriller or a thriller that has that has that crimey plot but also has like a lot to say about wider society so yeah i think i'm gonna sign off here um before i my ganucci um and yeah thanks so much for watching let me know if you've read any of these books if i've made you want to read any of these books or what if you had to do something like this like if you look at your tbr is there any word that you notice has like come up loads in the titles because i just found it really interesting that mine was blue obviously i'd love if you subscribed uh and i'll see you in my next one bye if he knows how to make ganucci it's over for you other guys